Welcome to Physics Learning. This is an introductory lecture on operational amplifier that is on op-amp. In this video, I am going to discuss some of the basic concepts related to operational amplifier. I will also discuss the characteristics of an op-amp. Before understanding what is operational amplifier, we must know what is amplifier. An amplifier is an electronic device that increase that means amplify the input signal which may be voltage or current. This is just a simple black box diagram of an amplifier. Here you can apply an input signal in the input terminal. Due to the amplification you will receive amplified signal at the output terminal. This is just a simple purpose of an amplifier to amplify the input signal, right? But why this term operational? What is the significance of this word operational? An op-amp can perform mathematical operations such as summation, subtraction, integration, differentiation and many more. As a single op-amp can perform these many mathematical operations, we can say op-amp is a versatile electronic device. And as it has many applications, so for us it is very important to understand the op-amp. Even by making simple circuit using a single op-amp, you can perform these many operations. Therefore, it is one of the important topic in the electronics. This is the circuit symbol of an op-amp. In op-amp, we have two input terminals and one output terminal. And we have two terminals for the power supply. Generally, op-amp is powered by positive and negative polarity of the power supply. Okay. Here, you can easily see two different input terminals are marked by two symbols. Input terminal marked by the negative sign is called inverting input terminal. Why? If you apply a signal at the inverting terminal, then this signal will appear at output with reverse polarity. That is, if you apply a positive voltage on the inverting terminal, then at the output terminal, you will always receive negative voltage. And the terminal marked by the positive sign is called non-inverting input terminal. If you apply any signal at this terminal, you will receive same polarity at the output terminal. Okay. But what will happen if you apply two signals simultaneously? If you apply two voltages at two different terminals, then in that scenario, output voltage is proportional to the difference of two signals voltage applied at two input terminals simultaneously. That is, if you apply V1 at non-inverting terminal, and V2 at the inverting terminal, then V out must be proportional to V1 minus V2. So here we must have a proportionality factor and that constant of proportionality gives the open loop gain, which is generally denoted by A. Okay. Why we are calling it open loop gain? Because if you use op-amp simply without making any feedback loop, in that scenario, an op-amp has a gain and that gain is called open loop gain. Therefore, we must write V out is equals to A times V1 minus V2, where A is open loop gain. This is the circuit symbol. In practical, we use ICs and 741 IC is widely used op-amp IC. You will find it in your laboratory. So for the laboratory purpose, people use the 741 because it is cheap and it is reasonably good for the practical purposes okay this ic consists of eight pins first and fifth pin number is for the offset null i will come to this point what is offset null pin 2 is for the inverting input pin 3 is for the non-inverting input here pin 4 and pin 7 is for the power supply in pin 7, you must connect the positive polarity of the power supply and in pin 4, you must connect the negative polarity of the power supply and pin 6 is for the output and pin 8 not connected. You don't need to connect in order to use this op-amp. And here I have included the circuit symbol so that you can easily understand. See here, pin 2 is connected to negative. Pin 3 is connected to positive, pin 6 is output. 
so you can easily correlate this ic with the circuit symbol okay now let's discuss the op amp characteristic we have seen the circuit symbol of an op amp if you want to draw the ac equivalent circuit then you must draw something like this as we are applying input signal at the non inverting and inverting channel so when a signal will face the ic or this op amp it must see some kind of resistance so we are calling it a input resistance and it is denoted by ri and at the output as i said that output will be amplified version of the difference voltage let's say the difference in voltage is vd then output must be a times vd that is denoted by a voltage signal and at the output we must have some kind of resistance so that is denoted by r not so this is just the equivalent circuit so here you can easily say if you just neglect that op amp then just see this equivalent circuit in the input we have applied a difference voltage vd which is faced by a resistance ri and at the output we have a output resistance and a voltage which is equivalent to a times vd right this is ac equivalent circuit of an op amp or simply equivalent circuit of an op amp now we have seen this circuit let's discuss about characteristic of an ideal op amp the very first characteristic is an infinite voltage gain that is a must be equals to infinity for ideal op amp but in practical just like a 741 we have a voltage gain something around 10 to the power 5 so in practical you will find out that a varies from 10 to the power 3 to 10 to the power 6 which is also very high okay so that's close to infinity we can approximate the second characteristic is an input impedance our input must be equals to infinity in practical we have 10 to the power 5 to 10 to the power 8 ohm at the input terminal okay this is also not the infinity but it's very high so we can approximate it to infinity the third one is zero input impedance that is r out which is denoted here by r not must be equals to zero in practical we have 0.75 to 100 ohm fourth one infinite bandwidth what it mean infinite bandwidth if you apply a ac signal at the input terminal then we will receive equivalent ac signal which is amplified at the output terminal if we vary the frequency of the input signal then output signal will change okay so for ideal op amp we want an infinite bandwidth that is output signal the amplification will not depend upon frequency we want each frequency signal to be amplified in same way okay but for the practical op amp we have finite bandwidth that is beyond some frequency op amp will not able to amplify with the same amplification factor similarly below some frequency op amp will be not able to amplify at the same amplification factor okay the fifth one is characteristic not drifting with temperature but in practical you will find out with the temperature some characteristic of op amp will change but effect is very slight so we can neglect it and sixth one is perfect balance and that's what we are talking about the offset null if we apply equal voltages at two input terminal then output voltage must be zero this is called the perfect balance condition for an op amp but for practical op amp we do not have this perfect balance so when we are using 741 ic and you can easily see that if you are applying a same voltage at the both terminal inverting and non inverting at same time you will see that output voltage is of few millivolt so it is not a perfect balance because it should be zero as because we are using a practical op amp it is not zero you won't find any op amp giving you a zero so when the op amp is not in the perfect balance and we want a perfect balance condition then by using those two pins 1 and 5 and making some kind of connection between them when i will come to the next lecture there we will see how we can do the connection in order to make perfect balance that is with the help of those offset null pins we can nullify this output voltage when we apply equal voltages at the two input terminal so far we have discussed that if we apply two different voltages then voltage difference will be amplified by a factor of amplification factor 
and that amplification factor is nothing but open voltage loop gain right if you plot the output voltage with respect to difference voltage then you can easily see that v out is equals to a times vd therefore we will have a straight line right and the slope of this straight line is open loop gain right and the value of this let's say approximately 10 to the power 5 let's discuss one point here we are biasing this op amp with some plus minus voltage let's say that voltage is 15 volt we are approximating it okay and as we are operating this op amp in open loop condition so obviously the gain will be open loop gain and let's say that is of the order of 10 to the power 5 now if you apply a voltage difference vd approximately 1 microvolt then output will be 0.1 volt so we will get this point if you increase the vd to the 10 microvolt we will get 1 volt output if you apply a 100 microvolt then what will happen we will get 10 volt but when you apply 1 millivolt in that case the output voltage will be more than 15 volt but as we are applying only 15 volt for the biasing so getting more than 15 volt at the output will be the violation of conservation of energy right so that's why after some critical limit of vd the output voltage gets saturated and that is called plus v sat if it is saturated in the positive direction and if it is saturated in the negative polarity it's a minus v sat okay and this plus v sat that is the saturation voltage in the positive side is always less than equals to positive voltage applied for the biasing similarly this minus v sat will be approximately equals to the negative voltage applied for the biasing okay this part which is looks like a straight line with the slope a this is called the linear region of an op amp and we usually work in this linear region unless until we are using this op amp as a comparator what we have seen here this open loop gain is very high and we cannot control it right therefore in order to use this op amp as amplifier so that we can control the amplification factor we must apply some kind of negative feedback after this i want to discuss one of the important parameter common mode rejection ratio which is kept in mind while designing an op amp what is that this is the circuit symbol let's say i am applying a v1 voltage at non-inverting terminal v2 voltage at the inverting terminal then we can easily calculate the difference in voltage that is difference signal will be v1 minus v2 and common mode signal which is the average of these two voltages v1 plus v2 by 2 now what we can write for the output voltage v out is equals to a times v1 plus a2 times v2 what is a1 a1 is the voltage gain when non-inverting terminal is grounded and what is a2 a2 is the voltage gain when inverting terminal is grounded so we can simply write v not like this as v1 and v2 we can write in terms of vd and vc by using these two relation we can simply write v1 as vc plus half of vd and v2 as vc minus half of vd right so just plug v1 and v2 in v0 and just simplify it after simplification we will get v0 is equals to half of a1 minus a2 times vd plus a1 plus a2 times vc this can be right in more simplified form like v0 is equals to ad times vd plus ac times vc as a1 and a2 is constant therefore half of a1 minus a2 can be written as ad and a1 plus a2 can be written as ac okay so what is ad if you look at this equation we can say ad is the voltage gain for the difference signal and ac is the voltage gain for the common mode signal so far earlier in this lecture i have discussed that output voltage is the amplification of difference voltage and that amplification factor is open loop gain right from this relation we can easily see there is a two terms so for an ideal case we must have ac equals to zero and ad is equals to infinity that is what the characteristic of an ideal amplifier 
that is open loop gain is infinity and we should not have any dependence on the common mode signal but in the practical case ac is not equals to zero therefore while designing an op amp we must consider the ratio ad upon ac which is called common mode rejection ratio cmrr okay as ac is non zero so what is desirable the desirable is ad tends to infinity and ac tends to zero that is cmrr must be tends to infinity therefore while designing an op amp we must have the condition such that cmrr is much larger than unity larger the cmrr better will be the op amp okay let me summarize it we have seen some important characteristic and we have seen the open loop gain right and that is 10 to the power 5 but in the open loop gain condition this amplifier can be only used as a comparator right because if you apply a very small amount of potential it will easily goes into the saturation region right we need to use the amplifier in the linear region and we need to control the amplification factor so that we can tune the input and output to do that we need to apply some kind of feedback mostly the negative feedback so that we can control the amplification factor all these things that is the designing some circuit like a non inverting amplifier inverting amplifier using the op amp i am going to discuss in the upcoming lectures okay see you then thank you